if you've listened to the show, Keon Coleman was not my target at wide receiver. Um, there's a lot of names that I wanted before Coleman. Um, and here we are. So I'm not going to sit here and, you know, brood and be mad at the Bills, all this. Um, there's different flavors of receiver, and he wouldn't have been the flavor that I was going for. Um, but now that, you know, kind of the haze in the barn, it makes total sense to me. Um, you know, you lost Gabe Davis. This is kind of for easy way of looking at it. This is the, the improved version of Gabe Davis. Um, better route running, better hands, better speed, um, more consistent, but he's still going to give you that, um, the blocking ability, all the kind of intangibles that the team loved from Gabe Davis and don't get it twisted. They absolutely loved Gabe Davis. And if, you know, it wasn't for him going out and getting a $15 million contract, if he could be a cheap player to be on this roster again, he would still be on this team. Um, it was just kind of a decision to, to let that money reset. And I think this is also kind of with the idea in mind of, you know, they were planning on replacing Gabe Davis in this draft. They weren't planning on replacing Diggs. Um, I think that Diggs situation just kind of popped up and they took their medicine and took an L on that one, but it wasn't in the plans. Um, so that kind of gets me to the point of were we going to see that position fully replaced in one year? And uh, I think that was kind of the idea that started being in, in the heads of, you know, let's make a major move up and replace Diggs in one year. Um, to me, this kind of signals like we like the guys we have, but it's also like on a two-year plan. And we'll see what happens. There's still a ton of offseason to go. There could still be a trade in the works. Um, but as it stands now, I'm, I'm kind of really excited to see what this group we have assembled looks like. Um, like I said, my, my flavor of receiver for this draft was going to be more of a separator. Um, but there's also, you know, some factors that we haven't really seen yet of like, I find myself continuously kind of sleeping on Curtis Samuel, no matter how excited I am for him. Um, and I think it's just kind of, you know, like where he's played and like who he's played with. I don't know about you, but I Washington football hasn't been very exciting. I, that hasn't been my go-to team to watch. Um, but looking at, you know, the speed element that a lot of people wanted, the separation element that I wanted, um, the ability to move them all over the field. Curtis Samuel has all of that. Curtis Samuel's been productive with terrible quarterback play. Um, so I think kind of low-key shakes out a little bit better than I'm giving it credit for. Um, then you add in Shakir, you add who absolutely blew up last year. Um, Kincaid, Cook, you know, there's options all over the place. Knox. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see how it works out. And like I said, from the beginning, I I'm never one, you know, with my, my pride on the line and I'm worried about being right or wrong. Um, Keon Coleman wouldn't have been my choice. Um, I'm kind of at the point of giving Brandon Bean the benefit of the doubt. I think he's had some great drafts and uh, I'm pretty much at every turn when I think I know something that Bean doesn't know, I've been wrong. Um, I wanted Josh Rosen and not Josh Allen. Um, last year, I was super concerned about the middle linebacker position and, you know, the year before didn't understand the Bernard pick. Uh, I was wrong about that. Um, just all kinds of things that I've been wrong about. Um, I will say that, you know, the immediate aftermath of the draft, you know, the first videos we're seeing of Coleman, um, he seems like he's going to be super fun, super easy to root for. And 
I'm not afraid of coming out and saying I was wrong about a player, and I sure hope that I get to to end up being wrong on this one. 